Okay, then let's check out a really interesting gravel group set. So a few months ago, a Chinese brand called L2 debuted their new series of fully hydraulic disc brake group sets. They are incredible value and massively undercut the big entrenched companies like Shimano and SRAM in terms of price. Now, I'm currently using their RX 2x12 road version of the group set on this bike here that I built up a few weeks ago. The braking is fantastic and it performs really well out on the road, but yeah, <laughs> there were one or two issues during the install. Can you hear that rattling? Now, L2 also released a gravel-specific 1x12 version of this group set that I'm gonna get installed today on this bike here, actually. Now, the group set itself looks fantastic and, again, offers fully hydraulic disc braking alongside some nice gravel features for an almost unbeatable price right now. So, what's it like? Will it have the same issues as the road version of this group set? And how will it perform on some gravel tracks with this, frankly, massive cassette here? My name, as always, is Luke. Welcome to Trace Velo. Okay, so this bike here behind me is my Chinese carbon gravel bike that I built up in a video last year. But right now it's in, well, it's, it's in a bit of a state. To be honest with you, it doesn't actually work. So when I first built this up, I used the Sensar SRX Pro group set to kind of keep the costs down a bit. It had one or two small issues, but overall I really enjoyed using it. But then about a month ago, I, I completely ruined this bike because I tried to install the ultra budget L2 GR9 gravel group set here. So it's 70 quid for the rear derailleur and both of these shifters. So incredible value, but well, essentially it was a disaster. The shifting is dreadful. But yeah, so far these brakes are no bueno. I have to put so much force through the shift paddle here. So this bike as it sits here is completely out of action. So I'm gonna pull the existing group set off the bike, get rid of the conduct braking system and replace it all with the new GRT gravel group set from L2. And while we're at it, I've also got a really interesting choice for the, for the cassette and the 12 speed chain for this bike as well. So let's get cracking, but before we do, today's sponsor is uh, Sirocco. They make some wicked cycle clothing and I wear their stuff uh, nearly every day of my life actually. So uh, yeah, more about them later on. Okay, so this is the new 1x12 GRT gravel group set from L2. In the box, you get both shifters, a rear derailleur, both hydraulic brake calipers, and a bunch of parts to mount those calipers and fit the brake hoses. You might also notice the packaging has changed slightly. The road version that I bought myself from AliExpress came with some nice foam packaging. This version, which was actually sent to me for free by L2, uses cardboard, does a great job protecting the group set, and it's also recyclable, which is always cool. Now, the, the shifters are nearly identical to the RX road version. They use the same carbon brake levers, but a small change, the shifter paddle is plastic here rather than carbon, presumably to make it a little more robust out on some bumpy trails. The calipers are also a flat mount variety, come with a ceramic and copper compound for the brake pads and look identical to the set that I just installed on my road bike. The rear derailleur will take up to a 50 tooth cassette, which is exactly what I'll be putting on actually, so we'll test that very shortly. The rear derailleur cage is also carbon on both sides to save a bit of weight, and the nylon pulley wheels have a narrow wide configuration like some chain rings to help the chain grip and prevent chain drops and, and stuff like that. There's also a clutch type mechanism here, and after taking it apart, I'm pretty sure it's a friction type clutch, which I learned from the comments section of another video of mine actually, so <laughs> I, de I definitely can't take credit for that knowledge, but does seem to be similar in design to some of the Shimano derailers and will definitely help with chain slap, so always good to have it. Weight-wise, both shifters, rear derailers, and calipers come out to 1,087 grams. From what I could find, a similar Shimano gravel group set, their GRX, comes out to 1,175, so this is nearly 100 grams lighter, which is cool. Now, cost-wise, you can currently get this on AliExpress for around 330 quid with shipping included. A Shimano GRX 1x11 group set currently goes for 599 without the rear derailleur. So basically, if this thing is any good, it could really shake things up in the industry, actually, which, <laughs> yeah, let's face it, it, it desperately needs, to be honest. Anyway, with all that being said, let's get this rude boy on the bike. Okay, so first things first, I'm gonna get this group set 
ripped off the bike and then I can tackle the giant conduct braking system. So for those that don't know, the conduct system here was developed by Giant a number of years ago and enables you to use a fully mechanical group set like this and power hydraulic brakes. So you can see I'll pull the brake lever here and there's a piston there which depresses, compresses hydraulic fluid and sends it down to calipers like these which are essentially fully hydraulic disc brake calipers. Now the braking performance was actually excellent and I think it was pretty much on par with a fully hydraulic group set. Uh, but regardless, this just isn't compatible with it and it's all got to come off anyway. And I'm going to start with this group set. So pulling this group set off the bike, very straightforward. The one thing to be careful of is ensuring you run some cable guide tubes over the rear derailleur cable before removing it so you can easily run the new cables through the frame. Now guide tubes always come included with new frames. So I've got loads of these from previous builds that I've done in the past, but you can also get them from some re-cabling kits as well. Anyway, with that done, I actually noticed a small issue with the crank set that I'm running. Okay, so I've just pulled this Senex GR2 crank set off the bike here because uh, the bearings seemed a little bit crunchy. And as I suspected, this bearing on this side is, yeah, it really needs a service. So hopefully I can save it. But you can see there's a green rubber gasket, which is designed to keep the water out. But if you look inside the bottom bracket shell, can you see that water in there? And if I show you the axle here, there's also water on the axle. So it's, it, well, the rubber seals are designed to keep water out, but as a consequence, they've also sealed water inside it as well, because I haven't taken this um, bike out for a number of weeks now, and it's still nice and wet in there. So a bit of a design flaw, I suppose, but I'm not sure if there's any way around it, to be honest with you, because you can seal it to keep the water out, but it also seals it in. Anyway, regardless, I'm gonna pull this bottom bracket off, see if I can service this bearing. Now, generally, these type of bottom brackets are not serviceable. But when has that stopped me before? This whole channel is devoted to wasting time on futile activities anyway. So once I pried off the plastic cap, you can see this bearing, which has been press fit into this aluminium cup. It's covered in rust, so I can access one side of it. So peeled off the bearing seal and gave it a really good rinsing with isopropyl alcohol. Now loads of crud fell out the bearing and it did get a little smoother. So I dried it out, repacked it with grease and stuck it back on the bike. We interrupt our program to bring you this important message. So as many of you lot will know, I wear Sirocco cycle clothing on every ride that I do and have done for a number of years now. They make some awesome stuff to suit every budget. And this is my go-to outfit right now. J1 jacket on the top. This thing is awesome. I've had it nearly two years and it still looks brand new, really. Keeps the rain off, looks really slick and it's super comfortable out on the bike. On the bottoms, I've got their BX Envelaria bib tights. Super comfortable padding, keeps you nice and warm on the bike, and you can't forget the socks. Booyah! Now, with spring around the corner, you might want to check out this, one of their M4 long sleeve cycle jerseys. Again, super comfy, looks wicked, and it's got these really deep pockets at the back to carry all your stuff. Their jerseys are also super nice. This one here is definitely one of my favorites. And if the weather's a bit chilly outside, you can also pair it with some arm warmers and a cycle vest as well. So yeah, if you wanna grab some stuff, use my link in the description down below. It helps me out a little bit around here and it'll get you 10% off the entire site. They got all sorts of cool stuff. So yeah, check them out. Um, anyway, thank you for listening and let's get back to it. Okay, so the group set is completely off the bike. That's all good. And you might also see I've put the bottom bracket and the crank on after I kind of tried to refurbish the bearings. But have a listen. I'll get my mic a bit closer without smacking myself in the face. Hopefully, that's coming across. Basically, the bearings are still a little bit crunchy. So I think I'll get a few more hundred miles out of that but that'll need replacing at some point. So next up, let's get this conduct kit off. And as, as it happens, I've installed quite a few hydraulic um, group sets, but I've never uninstalled the one, so I'm not entirely sure what I'm doing. But I think what I'm gonna do is there's a nut here, a bleed nut, so I'll, I'll, I'll unscrew that and put a bag on the end here to catch the oil. And then I'll undo this nut here, and then that should release the pressure and the oil should drain out of the system. So I'll do that front and back, and then we should just be able to pull the conduct kit off the bike. So yeah, let's get cracking. So rather than a bag, with the bleed kit for this conduct setup, I got the syringe that's normally used to push oil 
through the brake lines. I just used it to suck the oil out. It worked, uh, worked perfectly. With that done, I could remove the brake hoses from the back of the conduct faceplate and then whip off the brake calipers. Easy peasy. Okay, so the group set is completely drained of oil and I've removed both brake calipers from the bike. But in the same way as the rear derailleur cable, before I pull the rear brake hose back through this internally rooted frame, I need to make sure that I can basically replumb the new L2 kit through. So what I've done is I've grabbed my cabling kit here that I bought a number of months ago and it has come in so useful over the last few builds. And what I can do is I can actually thread it into the back of the brake hose there. So when it gets pulled through the frame, it leaves this cable there ready to kind of pull the new brake hose back through. So yeah, it's pretty much good to go. So I can just remove this conduct kit off the front and the bike is ready to receive the new L2 group set. So let's get cracking. I cannot overstate how useful this cable routing kit has been. I went for years without having one, but they cost like 15 quid and I use it all the time. If you cable bikes, you've, yeah, yeah, you've got to get one. It's a no brainer. Okay, so just pulling the group set out of the box. And the first thing I'm going to do is mount the brakes. So I'm going to pull the brake hoses through the frame, starting off with the rear hose here, this nice long one. And I'm just going to thread the end of that cabling kit into the end of the hose in there and then pull it through the frame. So let's go. Once again, very straightforward. I fed the brake hoses through the frame and the fork and using the pretty extensive mounting hardware provided with the group set, I got the calipers attached onto the frame. Okay, so I've got both disc brake calipers mounted and all the hoses are run through the frame and I'm actually running 160 millimeter disc brake rotors front and back and I've selected the correct adapter plates here for these calipers that was supplied in the group set. But the numbering on them is actually quite confusing. So let me explain. Okay, so I'm running 160s up the front here and I've selected the larger of the two caliper adapter plates. The other one is this one here and it's labeled 140, 160. So this is for 140 millimeter rotors. The one I've selected is for 160s, but it's got 160 to 180 on it, which is really misleading. It would kind of, it makes it seem like you could run 180 millimeter disc brake rotors, but you just can't. Maybe if your frame supported a slightly different sort of mounting pattern, maybe you could put a 180 on here, but it is slightly misleading. I thought maybe you could stack them up, but that wouldn't work. So essentially, this is the adapter plate for 160s. This is the adapter plate for 140s. Okay, so the calipers are sorted on the front and the back. Now we can get the shifters mounted up. So you'll be able to see I've left the clamping bands on the bars here from the previous GR9 group set that I removed down there. And that's basically because they're exactly the same as the ones that are in the back of the, the new GRT groups are here. So I can just take these out and then use these bands, which are basically in exactly the right spot to clamp them onto the bar. So that's gonna make my life a little bit easier. So I'll get that done on the left and the right, get the shifters mounted. Then I'll mount the rear derailleur on the back and then I can look at cabling. So I can cable up the rear derailleur, get the hoses fitted into the back of the shifters and bleed the brakes. So let's crack on. Securely mounting the shifters onto a set of handlebars can be a little fiddly at the best of times. So be patient with this step and especially with a set of carbon bars like my ones here, carbon grip paste is definitely your friend. Next up, running the gear cables for the rear derailleur. So it's worth pointing out, the cables supplied with the group set are very good quality actually. It's difficult to show on camera, but they appear to be polished and Teflon coated to aid in smooth shifting. L2 could have easily saved the buck here with some cheaper cables. So this is actually, yeah, really nice to see and kind of indicative of the group set as a whole, to be honest. You might have also noticed I tend to put a thin coating of oil on the cables as I feed them through the cable housings. Not 100% necessary, especially with decent quality cables like these ones, but I've always done it and I think it really helps. Okay, so I made some great progress so far and it has been very straightforward up to this point, no real surprises. And it's helped out massively by the fact that I'm not using an integrated bar and stem combo. So running the cables externally and, and the brake hoses and stuff just makes life so much less complicated. So you can see I've got the gear cable coming out the back of the shifter there, runs underneath the bar and then feeds into the, into the frame, this top one here. So I'll take you around the back. I've got the rear derailleur on the back there as well. It's all cabled in, all works. It's not indexed up yet because 
this isn't the 12 speaker set. I need to add that on later and I'll get it indexed up. And I've also cut the brake hoses here. I've cut them to the right length. So the next step is to use the included olives and barbs and get the brake hoses plumbed into the back of the shifters. Okay, so plumbing hydraulic lines is actually very straightforward. So you wanna get this mounted in there, right? So the first step is to cut the, the hoses to length. And then the next step is to get these barbs. And basically you wanna push the barb all the way into the hose up to this kind of lip. Now there is a special tool to get this done, but I've always managed to do it just by tapping it in with a little pin hammer. Okay, so once that's done like so, you can get this little nut. Slide that on the end like so. Get your olive, which is uh, yeah, goes on there like that. Then I get a little bit of grease. So I'm just get a touch of grease here. Put that on, on the threads and around the olive. And then you just wanna thread that into the back. Well, push it in and then thread that into the shifter. Easy peasy. Okay, so the group set is on the bike, good to go. The next step is to bleed it. Now, I'm not an expert, so I'm not gonna kind of go through how it's done. What I'll do is I'll link the video that I'm gonna follow from L2 in the video description to show how to do it. Basically, all you're gonna need is a decent bleed kit and some Shimano mineral oil, and you'll be good to go. So I'm gonna get this bled right now. So following the video from L2, bleeding the brakes was nice and easy, no problems at all. Now in terms of the cassette and the chain that I plan to use with this group set, VG Sports got in touch with me a few weeks ago. Now for those that don't know, I purchased some VG Sports chains myself from AliExpress a year or two back and they were, pre they were pretty awful actually. So I did an episode on it and essentially the chain was completely trashed after only 700 miles. But to be honest, it was so bad, it should have been off the bike after around 400 miles, really. So VG Sports emailed me and they asked if I wanted to check out some of their stuff again. Now, I am always open to retest things and, and give companies another chance, really. So I agreed and they sent across one of their 12-speed mountain bike cassettes and a few different chains for me to kind of test out. So after I got the group set all sorted, I slapped the chain and the cassette from VG Sports onto the bike and uh, very shortly after doing that there was a small issue okay so uh, here's the bike and i've cleared up a little bit as well and i bled the brakes and that went absolutely fine no real problems i've also rewrapped the old bar tape it's not particularly good stuff to be honest with you but it it'll do for now i'll probably replace it in the future so the bike is all good to go right well, um, it, it should have been, but I encountered an issue that I was not anticipating. So basically, the VG Sports cassette on the back here, I did this lock ring up, this bit here, I did that up super tight, like 35 Newton meters, but even so, the whole cassette rattles on the free hub. So check this out. So there's clearly an issue with this cassette. It doesn't mount properly on this free hub and I've tried it on a couple of other free hubs as well and it's the same. And I've contacted VG Sports about the issue so I'll, I'll see what they come back with. But <laughs> I, I was kind of expecting this to be the start of like a redemption arc for, for VG Sports but I, I, I don't think it's gonna go that way, unfortunately. And as, as desperate as I am to kind of delve into this issue and start pulling this cassette apart and measuring things. I don't want to derail this whole video about, about the group set, but needless to say, I'm pretty sure there are some issues with the manufacturing tolerances on this thing. And it means that I can't really gauge the shifting performance of this group set because I'm not confident the spacing between the sprockets on this cassette is correct. So I went ahead and bought myself this. It came in a post a couple of hours ago. It's a 12 speed cassette from SRAM. It's their PG1230 model, cost me about 75 quid. So I'll be putting this on the bike. And I also went ahead and bought the 12 speed version of this. So this is an 11 speed mountain bike cassette from ZTTO. And it was on this bike when it was an 11 speed setup. This thing was wicked, super lightweight, really great shifting performance. So I've got the 12 speed version of that on the way. So in an upcoming video, I'll be comparing those to this uh, faulty VG Sports cassette. We'll um, see what the problem is and we'll also see if we can fix it as well. Cause I reckon if I put some like shims between the sprockets, we could we could fix it. But yeah, um, get subscribed so you don't miss that. But for now, I'm gonna stick this cassette 
on the bike, get some miles on it and test out the group set. So I'll, I'll speak to you in about three seconds. Right then, 200 miles later, two small issues, both not a big deal, at least in my opinion, and overall the, the group set is really freaking impressive. So the first issue, the rattling that I noticed on the road version of this group set in a previous video, it's, it's not quite as bad on these shifters, but it is still present. So let me show you how to fix it. Firstly, if you've adjusted this grub screw, just wind it out and remove any free stroke adjustment you've put in. Unscrew these two bolts on either side of the shifter. You'll need a T10 and a T15 Torx bit. The brake lever will come off. And then if you turn the bike upside down, it'll make things a bit easier and you'll be able to see the piston. When it's slightly depressed, i.e. once the free stroke screw is used or you pull the brake lever, there's a small metal ring which has a tendency to rattle around. And hopefully you can see that here. Stick a bit of grease in there and you're good to go, uh, the, the problem is solved. Also, while we're on the topic, the second small issue here, free stroke adjustment and brake lever reach. So from my understanding, you can't change the brake lever reach with these shifters, i.e. this distance here between the brake lever and the handlebar, that can't actually be changed. It, it's, it stays this distance basically, but that's different from free stroke adjustment. So the free stroke screw here, in terms of what it actually does, via this little camming mechanism attached to the back of the brake lever, it essentially pre-depresses the piston and reduces the lever throw required to make the brake pads hit the rotors. Fresh out the box, the shifters do have a tendency to have a pretty big lever throw. So when it's on the bike without any adjustment, the brake lever comes back to here. Once the grub screw is screwed in, it pre-depresses that piston and reduces the lever throw but it doesn't actually change the brake lever reach. Now, I don't think this is that much of a big deal really because the shifters are a quite compact design anyway. Plus L2 stuff is generally better suited to people with smaller hands, but there is no brake lever reach adjustment with these shifters. So do bear that in mind. Also this grub screw that sets the free stroke adjustment, it's not captive. So if you screw it in too much, it will fall out the back of the, the brake lever and then you'll need to take it off as I've just demonstrated to get it back in place. But those issues aside, there is a hell of a lot to like about this group set. So as we've previously discussed, the price is pretty great. It's easy to install and bleeding it is, is pretty straightforward as well. Plus, now I've got a decent cassette on the back here. The shifting is very good. I'm running the biggest cassette that you can with this group set here. So an 11 to 50 tooth mountain bike cassette and the shifting is quick, accurate and consistent. I, I also love the fact that the same way as the road version of this group set, you can absolutely tear through the gears. So using the shift lever, you can, well, you can downshift three gears in one go. And then with the thumb trigger, you can upshift up to four gears with one kind of depress of that trigger. Yeah, comes in really handy actually when you're navigating stop-start traffic with a one by drivetrain like this one. The overall braking performance is top tier, easily up there with the best group sets that I've, I've ever ridden really. And the stock brake pads that come with this group set are really good as well. I think they're a ceramic and copper variety, great stopping power in wet and dry. Plus when they, when they wear out, you can replace them with your generic Shimano brake pads. So even their L05A pads with the ice tech fins, they fit perfectly in these calipers. The chain stabilizer on the rear derailleur is also great. Very few chain slaps, even when bunny hopping off curbs and over bumps and stuff. Plus changing gear while traversing rougher terrain, not a problem. And the, the drivetrain as a whole is also very quiet, which I wasn't anticipating. Normally with these more budget oriented gravel options, they tend to rattle around when you're hitting kind of rougher terrain, but, but not this one, it's nice and quiet actually. So overall, I am very, very impressed with this group set. In my experience, uh, a gravel group set that performs well on road and off, it's a difficult balance to nail actually, especially at this price point, but L2 have freaking nailed it. Anyway, quick PSA for you actually. So I've got quite a lot of scammers in my comments section recently. So what they tend to do is they'll set up a YouTube account, use my profile picture and then call themselves Nicegram or Telegram Trace Velo, something like that. And they'll respond to comments saying, congratulations, you've, you've won a prize. And they'll ask for your details. I respect the hustle, but 
it ain't, that's not me, it ain't me. So <laughs> don't, don't respond to those people. I try and delete those comments as soon as I see them, uh, but often I'll, I'll, I'll miss them for a day or two, but yeah, avoid those. That is a scam. And another thing, this crank set here, I used this on the previous build video that I did. It was literally the video before this one, actually. And I've already taken them off the bike. So they were super flexy under load and creaked like nobody's business. Plus, loads of people in the comments section said that they'd had a set of these break on them. So they're the ones with, can you see that there? They've got kind of hollow crank arms there. They've hollowed them out to save weight. They're seemingly super dangerous. So I'm gonna do a bit of a, uh, like a, a warning, a PSA video about these cranks because they seem to have quite an interesting backstory. Um, so if you've got any pictures of these breaking, send them to my email in the, in the video description down below. I will be forever in your debt. And lastly, shout out to Peter, AKA P1 in the comment section. We were chatting over email. Turns out that he came off his bike a few weeks back and hit the curb with his face. <laughs> so yeah, really sorry to hear that dude. That sounds pretty, pretty painful. So I uh, hope you feel better soon. Shout out. Uh, anyway, uh, that is all that we've got time for in this beautiful, wonderful, amazing, truly groundbreaking, phenomenal episode of Trace Fellow. So um, yeah, subscribe if you like this kind of thing. Hit the like button if you enjoyed this episode that I've crafted for you. And if you've got any questions or comments for me about this gravel group set, then uh, yeah, let me know in the comments and I'll get back to as many of you as I can. Oh, it's been, a, it's been a long evening this evening. What time is it? Well, this clock says five to eight, but that's wrong. I've that, I knocked that off the wall a couple, a couple of days ago. It was a gift from my mum as well, so I feel really bad about it. Uh, but it's busted and the time now is half past nine and I haven't eaten yet. So I'm gonna go and reheat some chili con carne. So, yeah, anyway, that's all we've got time for. Uh, see you in the next one. Ciao! Thing! It's the bonus clip time. Doo -doo -doo -doo. Doo -doo -doo. So, as it happens, a couple days ago, I pretty much finished editing this video together, but I needed a little more B roll, some nice uh, shots of the group set in action, out and about. You, you know how it is. Um, but, but I inadvertently ended up crash testing it. Frank. Oh, oh, that's not nice. Oh, holy shit. Frank oh, me. Oh, jeez. Oh, that's not very pleasant, is it? Shit. Oh, check that shit out. Fucking smash that like, like nobody's business. Ah, bullshit. <sighs> Crikey. Well, that wasn't very nice. Oh well. Mistakes happen, I guess. There it is. Have a look at that. Snap that right off. Oh well. Crikey. Be careful, I guess. Damn. So, I had planned to get a bit more B roll this afternoon. Um, but you might have just seen I just came off the bike, which wasn't, <laughs> wasn't very fun. I'm totally fine, but the group set's a bit shot. Um, yeah, the, the lever's snapped off. I had a look though, and it's all fine inside. Like the, the piston works, and that's all absolutely fine. But the. Uh, yeah, the lever's completely shot off. Um, so apologies if there's not quite as much B-roll of this group set as I, I would have liked. I did try, but uh, accidents happen. Um, I guess I haven't really done that much gravel riding in the grand scheme of things. Uh, and I was smashing it along this like quite loose gravelly path. I guess it's a lesson learned really. I can see where I came off right here. You might be able to see there's a little sort of rut in the dirt there. My front wheel just like skidded off. And uh, then, yeah, yeah, just lost control. Anyway, um, I'm going to call it a day. <laughs> and I'll see you next time. Ciao, ciao. So I am absolutely fine, by the way. And I had a, I had a quick look at this um, brake lever. And the brake is quite clean. It's quite a clean snap there. And I think epoxy would bond to it. 
really well, actually. So I might try and fix this um, before replacing it. I am aware it's the, the front brake lever, so it needs to be, you know, reliable. But yeah, I might give that a go, actually, before replacing the whole thing. So I guess stay tuned for that. Um, see you next time. Ciao.